All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. It is a beautiful Thursday mar morning, March 7th, 2024. We get together most weekday mornings to talk about our grant subsidized program. What we do is help small business owners, regardless if they're pre-revenue, pre-launch, startup, or mature, we help businesses become fundable, not through magic, not by sorcery, simply by following solid business principles. When you and I were in school, probably middle school, there's a very good chance that you were taught about the three C's, credit, collateral, and capacity. I remember in my case, I was a high school teacher in Aubrey, Texas. I taught business courses and technology courses. And, and a big part of what we taught those high school students are, were basic financial principles. But what's interesting is there are a lot of adults that either have forgotten what they learned or they didn't learn it. So what's important to understand is that if our goal is to get funding for a business, it does not matter how badly we want it or need it. What matters is do we qualify for it? And, and we refer to that as is the concept of is your business fundable? Not do you want funding, but is the business fundable? So we see here on the graphic on my shared screen over on the right, here's the, the money. I understand that's what small businesses want, and they wish none of this existed. This whole arrow, they would like us just to hit delete. They just want the money to start or grow a business. But that's not realistic. That's too good to be true. Probably the only way to do that is to buy a lottery ticket and then cross your fingers and hope that you win the lottery. Probably not very good odds. But the opposite of that is what this does, and, and many of you are our current distribution partners. So when I say we, I mean you and, 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 and us. That's what we do is we help small business owners navigate from wherever they're at to being fundable. It's not a scam. It's not too good to be true. It's basic financial principles. Really, the only person that could argue what we do is someone that doesn't understand or doesn't agree with financial principles. So let's go through it. And we're here to answer your questions. A very important part of us getting together each weekday morning is to answer your questions. So you can type those questions, comments, concerns into the Q&A, the question and answer box. It's like a chat box, a Zoom. So this graphic was designed to make it real easy to understand what the heck do we do? Because again, Everybody just wants the funding. They, they wish there was nothing else other than just being handed cold, hard cash, right? But that's not realistic. So to get there, we break it down graphically into four phases. So we applied for the grant. We received the grant. And the way that they package what we do is called the Startup Business Funding Program. I don't really like the name of that because a lot of times we work with businesses that are not startup, but regardless, we help businesses, regardless where they're at, become fundable, legally and ethically, no risk, guaranteed. So there, there, there's, there's no risk to the participant. So this list, essentially what's included, but, but I'm, I'm not going to spend as much time on that. I'd rather talk about the implementation phase, because all of this is captured in the implementation phase. So let's say that a small business enrolls today, on Thursday, March 7th. What's going to happen today for that client? Because we live in a society, you better show people results quickly, or they'll get a little edgy. So the first thing that we're going to do is get them funding offers. Now, even though we've not created a fundable business yet, which I'll be describing the meat of the matter is over here in phases two and three, we're going to go ahead and get them funding offers now. Now, within 24 hours, typically, of enrollment. How much will they get? It, it varies based upon their circumstances. It's rarely more than 150000 So it's usually just some initial working capital that they can use as needed. Also, what we're going to do in phase one is either start a new business, if that's what they wish, or we can audit their current business and make any tweaks that are necessary. 
So I'll just walk through this process as if we're starting a brand new business. But again, if a client brings some of these elements to the table, we can integrate that in and that just makes it even faster. So we're going to need to have a credible address. Now, when we go through this, and I say this without meaning any offense, it doesn't matter what you think about what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what I think. We're going through factually what it takes to be fundable to get funded. So this is not an opinion contest. It's just factual statements. So does a business, whether they're new or not, need a credible business address? Absolutely they do. And that's provided free, oops, sorry, free through the grant. Again, if they already have it, fine. If not, we provide that for them. If they do not have an entity that's formed and in good standing, we do that. And we do that for free through the grant. Again, if they have that, fine, we'll use theirs. Then we need to go ahead and get their EIN and bank account. Again, if they have it, fine. If not. But this is what we do in phase one. So now they've got some working capital in their pocket. Oops. Working capital in their pocket, which is great. And we know that they have kind of the infrastructure of a business for us to create fundability. Because the truth is, if they don't have a fundable, or I'm sorry, the foundation of a credible business, then the rest doesn't matter. Any questions on phase one? All right, so Sarah's asking how soon to get money. That's fine, Sarah. So we should be able to get offers normally within 24 hours, one business day, and then that should be in the client's hands, let's just say within a week, could be less. How much? Depends on the client's mitigating circumstances. So we're off to a good start, right? So now we've made sure that the client's got some working capital, they're not broke, and we've made sure that we have the infrastructure of a business to, to create fundability, which I'll describe. Now, we move into phase two. Uh, okay, uh, Pearlie's asking how long does phase one take? L let's just say a week. Normally, we're in phase one for a week. Could vary, but just to answer Pearlie's question, normally a week. All right, so now we're into phase two. Why? I, I think always understanding, instead of just the what, we need to understand the why. And, and, and hopefully there's no question about the why here. We want to have working capital. We want to have the infrastructure of a credible business. Pretty obvious. So now we're on phase two. In terms of, okay, Richard has a question on, uh, before we go to phase two. So the first tranche will vary, right? Because we're really taking the baseline circumstances of the participant participant in the grant. So some people uh, will get six figures in, in funding offers. Some will get five figures. Some will get four figures. And, and I guess it's possible that some people might not qualify for anything up front. Not a real big deal. Doesn't happen too often, but Richard's right. It's, it's possible. Because it's, it's their baseline credibility at that point. Good question, Richard. Okay, so now we're on to phase two. We need the business to be credit worthy. Well, why? Well, why does that matter? I just, I just want the money, man. I just want the money. That's what clients will, will try to tell you. Well, you know, there's someone loaning the money or with a grant, someone extending a grant. But let's just work off loans for a moment. Our program can work for either so there's someone loaning the money. They're not fools, right? They're, they're going to do underwriting and they're going to determine how risky is this lend, is, this, is this borrower. So we don't want to look risky. We want to look trustworthy. How do we get our business to look trustworthy from a credit worthiness perspective? We have a strong credit profile. Now, again, if a participant, a grant participant has that, then we can skip phase two altogether. We just audit it and move on. But often there's work that needs to be done, and we do that for free, right? So there's all kinds of free, 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 free stuff. But so we're going to, if it's an existing business, again, we're going to audit it. If it's a new business and there's nothing to audit, we're going to make sure that the profiles are set up. So what does that mean? So like Dun & Bradstreet, we need to make sure we have a Dun's number, and then make sure that our, our profile with Dun & Bradstreet 
for example, is optimize. Now, when I say optimize, I don't mean anything illegal or immoral, but just do we have all the information possible so that our profile looks strong to any lenders or extenders of credit that we might apply with? It makes sense, right? Then once the profiles are good, then we want to go ahead and start adding trade lines. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole program because you know, we've already shown the client value up here. So the client has immediately seen value and most likely has money in their pocket within the first seven days. So you know, we're off to a good start with the client. Here, when we're establishing trade lines, it gets even better. There's different types of trade lines we can add. So what's a trade line? A trade line is an, ex is a, an extension of credit to the business. Now talking about the business owner, to the business, the EIN, that reflects on the business credit report, like Dun & Bradstreet, Experian Business, and or Equifax Business. So trade lines are important. Well, why are trade lines important? Well, if we don't have trade lines, then the rest of the world doesn't know if our business has a history of paying its bills on time. And that's what we need to do is show them that yes, our business will pay back that big loan that we're trying to get because we've paid it, we've paid our prior obligations timely. So no different really than the concept of personal credit, just on the business side. So we can add trade lines. What kind of trade lines can we add? Well, certainly we can add real estate trade lines if relevant, but more frequently we get company automobiles. So this is a real picture of a company automobile that we bought. And many of you are out, many of our distribution partners are buying company automobiles. One of our partners just bought a BMW 7 Series. Absolutely incredible. Biz company autos are great, right? Because most of us drive anyway. Why not have a company car that's fully tax deductible? We can use section, possibly can use section 179 of the IRS tax code to deduct it in advance. But it's a big boy trade line, right? This was, what, $145,000. So when you have a $145,000 trade line reporting, that's a big deal. And we can do multiple vehicles if you need. Now, this is not about, not about you spending money that you don't want or need, but the bottom line is most of us need a vehicle anyway. So we can do company cars. We can do business credit cards. So no, this isn't all about getting business credit cards. We're going for cash over here. But the point is we need trade lines and we want to have useful trade lines, things that we can drive or things that we can use if at all possible. So that is phase two. Who has questions about phase two? Our Abraham's asking a good question. How long does phase two take? Well, phase two is actually the longest part of the process. So this whole arrow here normally is a 30 to 60 day process. That's the norm. Now we're showing immediate value and getting money in their pocket in most cases within the first few days. But phase two is the longest process because we need to get the DUNS number in many cases. We need to clean up the profile and then we need to add the trade lines. So this is the longest part. But it, it's okay because the client has already seen, participant has already seen value here. And they're, you know, they're getting a company car. They're driving every day if they want it. They're getting company credit cards if they want them. So they're seeing value, but we're building towards a fundable business. Okay. Anyone has questions, just go ahead and type it into the Q&A. So then we don't have to finish phase two, but we should have it in process. And then we can move over to phase three. Phase three is having strong business financials. Some people are naive or, I'm, I'm trying to find the right word that's not offensive. We'll, we'll just go with, some people are financially illiterate. And they say, oh, no, 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 it's a new business. It can't have strong financials. That's a wrong, that's a foolish, that is a financially illiterate approach. It's wrong, it's wrong. Can a new business have strong business credit worthiness? Absolutely, because we're going to add trade lines. Can a new business be strong, have strong financials? Absolutely. And, and these are the elements that allows us to get this funding. So strong business financials to qualify for business funding. So we're working on the client's financials like their balance sheet, 
And one of the perks, so what you notice is at every phase, the client is seeing financial gain, financial benefit. First tranche financing here, trade lines here. And now we actually do a transfer, a real transfer. People are sometimes amazed by that, but through the grant, it's a $10,000 transfer. Now I should mention that clients get a $2,500 grant allocation as soon as they enroll and participate. I guess it would be down here at the tip. So they're getting a 2,500 grant allocation as soon as they enroll. First tranche financing here. Primary trade lines like cars and credit cards here. And then over here, we're adding 10,000, which is referenced at this point. Well, why would we do that? Why would we give a client $10,000 of assets? Well, because the financials matter, right? So we need to have a balance sheet, which reflects the assets and liabilities of the business. And the balance sheet needs to have assets. And a lot of early stage businesses don't have a whole lot of assets. So what do we do to help alleviate that problem? We literally transfer over $10,000. So that's phase three. This doesn't take long. Uh, so again, this is the longest of the process because we have to, to do several steps and then get those trade lines reporting. Then we get over here to phase four. Phase four is the end goal. Now let's go to funding. Let's identify the right lender or lenders based upon the client's mitigating circumstances. How much funding do they want? What are their uses of funds? Kind of like what's their shopping list? Do they want to buy an apartment complex? Do they just want working capital? Do they want to buy a fleet of company automobile? What is it that they want to need? What, what's the money for? So based upon that, then we can go to funding based upon uh, what fits the client circumstances. All right, so with that, um, we're gonna answer your questions, of course. If you came to us from one of our distribution partners, please go back to them. They can help you get set up so you can receive these benefits and get funding. If you didn't come from a distribution partner, you can go through a simple two-step process. And frankly, we just completed step one, so you're halfway there. You would go to step two at this point on chapmanloanprogram.org. Now, on chapmanloanprogram.org, you'll find a lot of other resources. You'll find our phone number or email to communicate. A lot of great information on that resource site. But again, if you came to us from one of our distribution partners, you want to get back with them, and they'll help you get set up so you can get the funding that you want to need. And if you came to us directly, go ahead and go to Chapman Loan Program after the, the webinar. All right, so John has a question about students, whether it be high school or, or college students. Well, I do think teaching financial literacy to youth is valuable and, and needed. And so you could certainly go teach it. But if, if what we're talking about is actually executing this to get funding for young entrepreneurs, that's great. And, and I, I think that's what a lot of our successful distribution partners are doing is that they're going to where the entrepreneurs are. And instead of us teaching out of a textbook for a semester or, or longer, we in an hour can frankly teach these entrepreneurs the nuts and bolts of what it takes to get funding. So as long as they're 18 or older, then we're okay. In general, in the U.S. financial system, if you're under the age of 18, you're not able to uh, to partake in these types of financial transactions. All right. All right. Harriet asked about risk. What's the risk? Well, th there is no risk, right? Because we're providing value to the client so that the client's getting a $2,500 grant allocation at the point of, of enrollment, which is down here at the tip. They're getting first tranche financing here. They're getting primary trade lines like cars and credit cards here. They're getting the $10,000 transfer here. And then we'll, we'll go to funding here. So we're going to work with the client. And, and obviously what we do is in writing, right? That That's 
the validity when you have someone that comes and pitches you something that sounds too good to be true usually it's some verbal offer that may or may not be credible well we don't do business that way to comply with the grant restrictions we must have a written agreement with the client that outlines what we promise to do and guess what it outlines that we promise to do these things so there is there's literally no risk now is this the right program for everyone eh, I, I guess not i mean I, if, if the goal is to get funding the question simply becomes is your business fundable right now is your business fundable the problem is a lot of entrepreneurs don't know how to answer that well what what are we looking for when we ask is your business fundable well, frankly, it's all these elements we've discussed. Do you have a credible address? Do you have an entity in good standing? Do you have EIN and bank account in good standing? Do you have strong business credit worthiness? In other words, a strong paydex score and multiple trade lines, preferably bigger trade lines. Do, do you have that now? Do you have strong financials that shows collateral for loans, right? So, so those are the requirements uh, often, very often, entrepreneurs will have some pieces of that, but not all of it. And, and that's kind of the, the disadvantage to the financial system. You need all of this to accomplish the goal. Because you could have a small business owner come to you and say, well, I have some of these things. I just want the money. Well, some of those things don't get you the money. It's having a fundable business. So again, uh, you know, we're here and, and typically every morning we educate. Our goal is not to sell you anything. Our goal is to, to educate what it takes to have a fundable business. There's two ways you can be involved. You can participate and get your pile of funding if you would like, if you need. The other option is you can help us teach this. We are looking like John for John and we're looking for others that would help us teach or educate. You don't need to be a salesman. You know, leads are provided, but the concept is we need to educate entrepreneurs about what it means to be fundable, explain to them how the grant subsidized program works. And normally when you do that, most people will say, yeah, that, that makes sense. Any questions that anyone has for me on the four phases, on the, the startup business funding program, uh, I guess anything, right? any any questions, comments, concerns, I, I would say, let's just give it a try, right? There, there's, there's no risk to you. What we need to do is to get you engaged, all right? So, uh, John, from your perspective, John or anyone that's looking at being a distribution partner, again, you can go to chapmanloanprogram.org, scroll down to the bottom of the website, and there is some information about being a distribution partner. The first link will allow you to get set up to be one. Very simple. Very simple. We have a lot of, of resources that are on the Chapman Loan Program website. Uh, they're not password protected. You don't have to register to see them. We're very, very transparent. All right. With that, I think you understand who we are and what we do. We, we invite you to participate. If you'd like to be a distribution partner, we'd love to partner with you. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Let us know if we can help. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.